Hey everyone, Jason, welcome back to another Marvel United unboxing. This is for the Multiverse Kickstarter Big Giant Box uh, Stretch Goals. This is video part 5. Uh, so the first three were villains and anti-heroes and the, the villain half of those. Uh, the fourth... Um, sorry, the fourth video was our first bunch of heroes, which were uh, X-Men and X-Men related and monster characters, monster and magic stuff. Uh, this one is going to be some more of our, the rest of our anti-heroes from the villain set. They're coming back. Uh, so you can see here we have the Winter Guard, um, as well as we're going to have some Thunderbolts, but we're also going to have some new Avengers, Spidey characters, and the Young Avengers, um, as well as some other couple characters here and there. Uh, so yeah, we're going to go ahead and hop into this. Um, and let's see, we're going to start off, I'm going to start off by showing a miniature, which isn't a miniature at all. Uh, we have Devil Dinosaur and Moon Girl. Um, so they made some big oversized ones. So in the regular other boxes, the only oversized one we have is Goliath uh, from the Civil War box. Set. So here we get another big giant one. Um, Devil Dinosaur with Moon Girl. Originally, it was Moon Boy way back in the day. It was like an ape-like creature. This is Luna Lafette, I believe is her actual name. And she's an inhuman who has, like, superhuman intelligence. Um, and she found a way to, like, mind control Devil Dinosaur. Uh, and they work as a team. She doesn't, like, control him, but she can talk and communicate with him. Uh, so, yeah, so this is pretty cool. So, like, as a comparison, I'm going to throw up, uh, there's Patriot as a size comparison. So, yeah, pretty decent size. So, what does Moon Girl do for us? She's going to have the ability to move. She has some roller skates on. And she has a dinosaur. Um, so, attack, a moving attack, moving attack, moving attack. Makes sense. Heroic, double heroic, a wild, and a double wild. Uh, then her abilities are she has super genius intellect. Uh, gain one hero or one wild token. This turn you can treat all your action tokens as wild. And now it has a move at the bottom. Just one with heroic and one with attack. And she has a starting hand card, which would be Raging Dinosaur. As long as this card is in play, it's face up in the storyline. When you enter a location with no other heroes, you may attack her. You do discard one civilian from that location, if any. Hey, a free attack, though. Um, as long as she enters it, she doesn't have to end her turn there. So that's pretty cool. So she can get around eating a bunch of people. Alright. Up next, we're going to do some Spidey stuff. Um, oh, so like, like most of the heroes in these games, they've been in lots of different teams. So we have... Agent Venom, Flash Thompson. So, of course, he's Flash Thompson. He's you know, generally a spider villain. He's uh, done stuff with the, the Venomverse stuff when he was touring around, going around there. He was part of uh, Red Hulk's Thunderbolt team. Uh, he's part of the Avengers for a while. He went became Space Knight for a while and Venom the Space Knight and joined the Guardians of the Galaxy. So, he's been around. Um, glad this wasn't, like, a weird one-off character, what they created him. I had the book, like, was one of his first things, big series. I'm glad they didn't just do it, and then, like, oh, okay, we tossed him aside. So, I'm glad he's still been around all these years later. It's a really cool design. Um, alright. So, we have a m attack, double attack, move attack, move attack. Oh, when he goes back to the old... Sometimes he loses control and goes back to the old Venom face. Um, move heroic. Wild. Double wild. Got two copies of Symbiote Enhancement. If the Symbiote suit card is based up in the storyline, you may add up to three Crisis Tokens to it. For each Crisis Token you added, perform one move or... <clears throat> move or uh, attack action. Uh, then he also has Camouflage. The next villain turn, you may redirect any damage dealt to you or to any henchman or thug in your location. And then he's got two starting hand cards, which are Web Generation. Uh, or Webbing Generation. As long as this card is in 
face up in the start line. If there are no move symbols at the bottom of the last two cards in the start line, you may perform one free move on your turn. And then he has Symbiote Suit. If there are three or more Crisis Tokens on this card, you must play your next hero card randomly and then discard all Crisis Tokens. So basically, you can get a little bit of boost later on, um, but then has to randomly play something. So it's kind of like sketchy when you want to try doing it. Um, all right. Now we have another Spider-Man. Cyborg Spider-Man. So this one's kind of funny because it's one hand multiverse. They have a what if he kept these enhancements. Um, otherwise, it was from, I think this is literally from like a one issue costume. Um, like he got injured and whoever was helping fix him up, like so just got him to get these stitches on there. Um, but gave him some of this like armor stuff to like help um like heal his wounds and then literally he i think he took it off like two seconds later or got damaged in like the first battle he got into like it wasn't meant to be uh a permanent thing it was just like like he didn't like lose an arm as a cyber arm it's just like a sheath over it it's just kind of interesting um but i know there was a what if version where he kept all that it's just probably like some alternate reality that's kind of fun too so you have cyborg spider-man he has uh, moving heroic, move heroic, move attack. There's a cannon on there. Um, heroic, wild, double wild. Two copies of the cybernetic arm, which give him double attack. Uh, two copies of cybernetic structure. You know the first damage you would take next villain turn. A Sonic Cannon, uh, Wild, or Recharge Your Sonic Cannon Equipment at the end of your turn. And he does have his starting card, which is Spider Sense. As long as this card is based up on the starling, once per villain turn, if a villain ends their movement in your location, you may immediately move one adjacent location. And then he gets the Sonic Cannon uh, Equipment. So, if you haven't used Equipment before, just a quick rundown is, to use them, you have to take out your Double Wild card. That's the rule. Um, then you can basically use this whenever it's available, and then each one has different effects. Some are one-time effects, some are, uh, permanent effects, some have, uh, use, you can recharge them, just depends on the thing. Uh, some characters have multiple, so you can have multiple, so you can discard your one wild token, or double wild, and you can have three, up to three different equipment. Um, and then the core set also does come with generic ones for characters that don't have any. Um, so not every character needs equipment. Uh, so it says, use, on your turn, discard any crisis tokens on all civilian and thugs in adjacent locations and attack there. Then turn this card face down. If there's any crisis tokens on civilian and thugs um, in adjacent locations, you can discard them. And if you use this, you flip it over. It says, recharge, at the end of your turn, discard one action token and turn this face up. Or... Uses other card ability. Cool. Uh, as long as we're talking about cyborg characters, let's look at Deathlock. Um, Luther Manning was the original one. Uh, then he's been multiple other people over the years. Uh, but yeah, half cyborg, half human soldier. Uh, but one thing that's always interesting about this character is that the uh, robot half is the good half. Um generally the one that's telling them how to do everything be correct and then the human half is like a psycho killer so i mean that's not again, not all versions but that's i don't remember which one that is that's my, my favorite version of this character where his robot half is what's actually like in charge and keeping everything like hey we need to do this and do that and then sometimes he's like he just lets the human take over and the human goes ballistic um i just thought that was an interesting different way to do a cyborg Instead of the robot taking over the human and that being evil. Uh, he has move, move, heroic, move, attack. Uh, heroic, attack. Heroic, just an attack. A wild, is double wild. Massive weaponry. Gain one attack token. This turn you may treat moves and hero tokens as attack as well. So he just uses tokens as extra attacks. Uh, cybernetic Repairs, gain one Heroic Token. If you have one or two cards in your hand, draw a card. 
cybernetic reflexes, gain one move token, and you are the first damage you would take the next villain turn. So if you play those other ones, you get extra tokens on that last one becomes more effective. Then he does have a starting hand card, which is Computer Mind. Um, as long as this card is face up in the start when you have to draw a single card, you may draw two instead, keep one, discard the other, and put it at the bottom. So that's kind of fun, right? You get a little bit of different option there. Um, awesome. All right, our next one up, we're going to look at some of our Thunderbolts. So we're going to look at uh, one of the members that's been almost every single incarnation of the team. Melissa Gold, or Songbird, originally the Master of Evil, Screaming Mimi. Um, this is a really cool model, though. She gets these nice pink translucent wings and flames. There's her manifestations of her sonic abilities. Um, which I didn't really under... I knew she had a harness to let her do that, but I didn't quite understand it. Um, then I finally just recently read the issue where they talked about their origins. And it was a modified version of the villain Claw, uh, his ability to turn things into like sonic constructs. So she just has this little harness around her neck, which is really cool. But yeah, she's been almost every single incarnation of the Thunderbolt, which are villains that are pretending to be good guys and decide to become good guys. Um, all right, so she has attack uh, with a move, moving heroic, move attack. Move heroic, heroic, move a wild, a double wild. She's got her sonic blast, which has uh, attack in each adjacent direction. Sonic shield during the next building turn, all heroes in your location are the first damage they would take. And then two copies of Manipulating Song. Uh, the next building turn, choose a henchman in your adjacent location. Then, bam. Effect is replaced with deal one damage to a villain, and other henchmen, or thug in this or an adjacent location. You choose the target. Ooh, that's cool. So you can basically their bam effect, they don't get a good, and then they deal damage to somebody else. Um, so you guys going to choose a henchman in your location or adjacent location. Cool. So you got to kind of plan where a henchman is going to be, but it's still pretty fun. Um, unfortunately, we don't get all the Thunderbolts. We only get two of the main ones. So our next one up is going to be Moonstone, Carla Soften. Um, yeah, it would have been cool if we got some of the other ones. But it's also that back and forth is some of them, do you want the villain version or do you want that? Like, it would have been cool if we got Atlas. We had another giant character. So I would have liked more of those. Um, I also would have been neat if we had four of them. So you could have had like a full team of giant characters or 2v2. Um, the other one would have been Techno, um, or, uh, Citizen V would have been odd one to do, because he was, um, he's always kind of been, uh, Baron, Baron Zemo, um, otherwise he's always been some other per different character, but he also could have gotten, uh, Mach, Mach 1 through 10, depending on what version he is. But he was also the Beetle, and that's where I'm kind of torn at, because it's like, the rest of these guys weren't huge, huge villains. Like, they were obviously villains, but... Um, I would have liked, yeah, for him, to have him in there, my, my thing would have been like, I almost would have also liked to have the Beetle, too, just because he's just such a classic villain. But Jacob always done, like, the new female Beetle um, as well. Um, yeah, I hear her. Um, I kind of said in the billing video with her, she's kind of neat, but without having some sort of energy on her hands. She just kind of looks like she's just, like, pushing. Um, it doesn't look as cool as it pro possibly could have, especially compared to the last one. But she's also an anti-hero. Alright, so we have with her, she has movement, move attack, move attack, attack, heroic attack, wild double wild she's got two copies of manipulative skills because she's a high psychologist uh move any number of civilians from your location to adjacent location if you do attack in that location uh then she has two copies of gravity manipulation move any number of villain henchmen and thugs from adjacent locations to your location if you do double attack in your location 
And then her starting card is intangibility. As long as this card is faced up in the storyline, you may ignore one damage. Each villain turn, if you do, you must ignore one available action on your next turn. So cool. Void damage, but you get less attacks. Makes sense. Um, all right. We are going to head in to Russia and look at the Winter Guard. So if you play them as a villain, you get to play as them all as one team together. But we can play as them as individuals. So we have Red Guardian. So uh, Russia's answer to Captain America. He's got the big star shield there. A little thing on his head is kind of cool. They're very different costume. The only main member of this team we didn't get was Vanguard. Um, the only reason I wonder, I, I don't think he's been around in the comics as much lately. I think that's part of it. I think the other reason is because his main weapons are the sword and sickle, which are very communist Russia. I don't know if they're used as much anymore, so that might have been the other reason. Um, so he has moving attack, move attack, move attack, attack, move heroic, double heroic wild double wild um then these guys are going to have a fun ability so like some of the other teams like alpha flight and star jammer so they're going to have winter guard each hero with a winter guard card in the star line draws one card so these guys um when one plays it then each one's going to gain more bonuses as more guys play these cards so if they all play them quicker uh they'll gain bonuses uh then we have Honorable Fighter, double attack. You can't defeat henchmen or villains with this special effect. Uh, so he punches people up, but he's only going to defeat thugs. Um, and then he has KBG Training. Well, he has many cards from the top of the Master Plan deck equal to the number of civilians you rescued this turn. You can put any number of these cards at the bottom of the deck. That's pretty crazy. Now, I am a little bit annoyed by the fact that he doesn't get a shield. Every other Captain America gets a shield, but he doesn't. Um, you know, so that would have been kind of nice for him to get. I get not every character that has a shield has one, because, like, um, Captain Britain didn't get one. Uh, I don't think Black Knight gets one. But it's still a fact, though, is that he has another shield like all the other captains. So it would have been cool if he got one. But that's what it is. All right, up next we have Ursa Major, the big giant guy that turns into a bear. You know, of course, named after the star sign. Um, so, you know, they're one of our big monster -y characters if we only have a team animal. We got Sasquatch. We have Ursa Major. We have Werewolf by Night. Um, well, there's like the three big animal-like guys that don't have outfits on me. Obviously, have Wolfbane, Feral, Feral um, a couple of guys like that. But, um, all right, what does... Oh, we had another card here as well. A red guardian. It got mixed in. We had starting hand card. He has uh, still test pilot. As long as this card is spaced up in the store line, each time you use your location's end of effect turn uh, to move yourself, uh, gain one to uh, token. That's cool. Uh, kind of limited because it has to be a move effect. Um, but still, not bad at all to have that extra ability. All right. Back to Ursa Major. Big giant grizzly bear. Um, I think he's a grizzly. Uh, move. Move attack. 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 Of course he's going to have attack cards. He's a bear. Double attack. Heroic. Uh, wild. Double wild. So he gets his Winter Guard card. So his is each hero with a Winter Guard. And the storyline gains one attack token. So the thing is, you're playing these guys as a team. If by themselves, they're always going to gain their ability. Because they'll have one up in there um, when it activates. But if you're trying to do them up to your side, uh, who gets to go first? So who gets to... So, like, one guy's going to get one ability, and the next guy's going to give them to two, then the third one will give it to all three. So you kind of got to play them in order there. Um, and then he has three copies of Wild and Unpredictable. Move and Attack. Uh, if you use this... You must play your next hero card randomly. Still not too bad, though. 
um, worth the extra damage. All right, our third member of the scheme is Dark Star, uh, who wields the Dark Force abilities, which let her access dark energy from a dark dimension, which also Cloak uses as well. Uh, so yeah, I like that she has a little effects on her hands. Like they should have done that with like Moonstone and some of the other characters. I think like Doctor Strange has some too. But uh, yeah, it looks better with her having something on there. Uh, when I was like Moonstone looks kind of like just as a comparison there, right? So like nothing on your hand. She just kind of looks like she's pushing air. Something on her hand looks like she's casting a spell. So it could have been just been like a light burst off of one hand would have been kind of cool. Um, but it's what it is, right? Alright, so what does she do for us? She has... Dark Star has Move Heroic. Move. Heroic. Attack. Move Attack. Move Attack. Wild. Double Wild. Her Winter Card Guard gives her, um, one, everyone, one additional, um... Heroic token. Uh, she has two copies of the Dark Force Construct. Perform any combination of two attack or heroic split as you like in your and adjacent locations. And a starting hand card that is Dark Force Teleportation. As long as this card is faced up on the storyline, when you perform a move action, you can move to any location. Cool. Can't bring other guys with it though, which is kind of odd. Uh, but maybe it's just because you're already too wordy of a card. Uh, but that's alright. Alright. We have one more Russian character. We have the White Widow, or Yelena Blova. Um. We go with our Black Widow set. So you can play with her, Black Widow, Hawkeye... And Kate Bishop, and you could have, recreate the uh, stuff from the Hawkeye TV series or some of that stuff. Or you only have Hearth Winter Soldier. Right? They're getting kind of neat stuff in there. You could create some of the stuff. Eventually, we might have enough characters to do the upcoming Thunderbolt show. So if we don't have Ghost, I think that might be the big one we're missing. Um, but yeah. So let's jump in and see what she does. As an assassin, she has Move. Move Heroic, Attack, Double Attack, Move Attack, Move Heroic, Wild, Double Wild, uh, Gauntlet Recharge, uh, Attack, or Recharge Your Wiggles by Equipment at the end of the turn. Master Spy, if you're in the same location as the villain reveal, the top two cards from the Master Plan deck, you may put one to bottom or remove it from the game. Now, so I'm like, why wouldn't you just remove it from the game? Because it shortens the timeline up. So if it's something that's not terrible, ah, we can deal with it later. Put it back on the bottom. But if it's something that's like, oh, this is going to cause untold damage and kill everyone, um, you might just want to get rid of it, right? Uh, they have two copies of Master Fighter. Until the beginning of your next turn, you can redirect the first damage you would take during a villain to a thug in your location. So they're cool. She can transfer damage. Uh, then she gets the Widow's Bite. So she's going to have. Uh, use on your turn. Attach a stun token to a henchman in your location. Then. Turn the space down. The next villain. And their bam is cancelled. And the token is discarded. The next villain. Turn their bam. Okay. Cancel uh, Henchman's Bam. And then this turns this. It says, uh, turns this over, and then this has recharge at the beginning of your turn. Discard two action tokens to turn the space up, or use her one card. She also has her battle batons. Use on your turn attack in your location. Then if you defeated one or more thug, perform an extra attack, then turn the space down. And this also has a recharge during your turn. Discard two move or one hero to turn the space up. So cool. So she has a uh, different one to ignore stuff and one to do some extra attacks, which are really cool. Alright, we have another anti-hero here we're going to look at. Is we have good old Red Hulk, uh, General Thunderbolt Ross. 
who also led a team of Thunderbolts as well. So he kind of tied in with the Thunderbolts. Um, but his was Ghost Rider, who we have now in the previous video. Um, also was Punisher, Electra, and Agent Venom, who we just had, and Deadpool. So, except for, again, having the leader, which I don't think we did a heroic version of the leader anyhow, we could recreate that team, which is pretty fun. Um, awesome. So, what does Red Hulk do for us? He has Hulk Smash. Uh, no, he has... I love that it's the same symbol as the Green Hulk, just it's Red. I love when they do that. Same thing as the Black Widow did that. White Widow. Uh, move. Move attack. Double attack. Double attack. Double attack makes sense. Uh, he's heating up. He gets heroic. Uh, wild. Double wild. He's got two copies of Red Rage. Deal one damage to everything else in your location. Then discard all civilians there. Um, and then he also has two copies of Absorbing Energy. Each other hero in your and both adjacent locations must discard one card with special effect from their hand. If they have any, gain one wild token for each card discarded this way. So basically, you can force everyone to discard a card. He gains a bunch of wild tokens to use. Um, pretty cool. Uh, I mean, if your team can afford it. Um, to me, I'd check with everybody. Don't just do it, but, you know, that's me. Alright, let's hop into the next hero. Oh, as we're going with alternate version or uh, styles of heroes, we have Green Hulk, we have a Red Hulk. Instead of Captain America, we have U.S. Agent. Um, so yeah, I can't remember his name. Walker. Something Walker. Um, it's not coming to me. If you want to say Paul, but that's not the right Walker, that's Fast and the Furious. Um, not there. Um, Alright, but we have him. He's another anti-hero, so we get a villain deck with him. Because he does kind of go against... He does what he needs to do, he thinks, to protect everything. He's always trying to do the right thing. He's not, in general, evil. He's just like, this is what needs to be done to protect uh, the country or for America. Um, so he does whatever he needs. He thinks needs to be done. Might not agree with the other heroes. All right, so he's got a uh, moving attack, move heroic, a wild, a double wild, and he's got some abilities. So he's got uh, two copies of whatever it takes, which we were just saying. Um, until the beginning of your next turn, you may redirect the first damage you would take to the rightmost civilian thug in your location, discarding it. Two copies of I'll Do the Work. Move clockwise one location. The next location with any heroes. Attack there. Um, he's got two copies of shield blow. Uh, attack then recharge your US agent shield equipment. Until the end of your turn. And then two copies of no mercy. Attack no location if you do discard one thug there. It's pretty cool. It's very simple. Um, he's got his shield. It says US agent shield. Use on your turn to attack uh, an adjacent location, or use it on a villain's turn to ignore one damage dealt to your hero, then turn that card face down. And while it's face down, at the beginning of your turn, discard one action token to turn it face up, or use your other card to recharge it. So pretty pretty straightforward for him. Um, awesome. All right, and then as long as we're talking about Captain America characters, why don't we look at a legacy hero? We have... Eli Bradley, um, or the Patriot. Uh, so this is our first member of the Young Avengers. Technically, if we're going through all the videos, there was one more with Hulkling, who is a Kickstarter exclusive in the Civil War box set. Um, and then we also had, in the original series, we also had uh, American Chavez, who was also one. And then we also, in the Civil War set, we had Kate Bishop. So technically, we have three other, um, three other young Avengers so far. But we have Isaiah Bradley here. Not Isaiah Bradley. Um, Isaiah is his dad. Um, Eli Bradley. Uh, so yeah, he's the Patriot, who originally didn't even have any powers. Um, but then you got blood transfusion from Captain America. 
gain some super strength. Otherwise, he was using mutant growth hormones. Uh, he was using drugs, kids, uh, to gain superpowers. Uh, so what does Patriot do for us? He has heroic, of course he does. Uh, move attack. Move attack. Heroic attack. Throwing some stars, that's awesome. Uh, move heroic. And attack is wild. Double wild. Uh, two copies of a capable leader. Give one heroic token or one wild token from the pool to another hero. He's got throwing stars. Attack against two different targets in adjacent locations. And finally, he has skilled tactician. Uh, move a threat from your location to an adjacent location with no threats. That's cool. I don't know if there's many cards that let you move a, move a threat around. So that's pretty neat. Um, that way you can use the end of turn ability a little bit better. Um, awesome. And then he also gets his shield. Says use on a villain's turn to ignore up to two damage you would take. Then turn this face down. And it says that being your turn. Discard two action tokens to turn this face up. Cool. Um, Alright, our next Avenger. Uh, if you have watched... Um, spoilers, if you've watched WandaVision, he's in there. Um, not Wanda, was in WandaVision, uh, Agatha, all along he's in there as well. We have good old Billy Kaplan, uh, or Billy Maximoff, the Wicking. So again, kind of, kind of sucks that to get, uh, Hulkling to go with him, who's his boyfriend, uh, eventually, um, I think they eventually get married, so husband. Um, you have to buy the Civil War Kickstarter box set. So that kind of, so if you're picking this up late, unfortunately, uh, that might be a little bit trickier one to pick up. But he's still pretty cool. Um, remember, he first came out, he went by Asgardian, because he was trying to mimic Thor. Um, he's more trying to mimic one of the original Avengers. Hulkling, obviously, he's mimicking Hulk. Um, so yeah, he has, uh, heroic, um, move heroic, move heroic, uh, double heroic, and attack, move attack, wild, double wild, uh, reality warping. Another hero can swap one card from their hand with one of their face-up cards in the star line. That's pretty cool. That's always fun to do. Uh, Force Blast, double attack in the adjacent location. And he's got two copies of Wild Magic. Uh, choose one, move to any location or another hero in your location. Uh, draws one card or reveal the top card of the Master Plan deck. So yeah, some different options there. It's always fun. Uh, just to see what we got. It would have been almost neat if it would have been, because uh, it's Wild Magic. It would have been kind of neat if it was like, uh, reveal the top card of your hero deck and then do whatever the first symbol is and then like you wouldn't have known which of the three it was um, and if it was wild then you get to pick if it was the wild symbol then pick your own that would have been kind of neat as well um, it's not been kind of cool but it wasn't meant to be alright so after wicking we have his brother Tommy Tommy Shepard uh, who is speed takes after his uncle uh, Pietro Maximoff, or Quicksilver. He's got the little dust cloud there. I also love on the bottom where, like, he's... It's almost like he's swig to a stop rather than running. Um, like, he came to a sliding stop and he just tore up the ground. So that's pretty cool. Uh... Yeah, so he's pretty neat. Um... Alright, so what is he's gonna have probably a lot of movement. Of course, being a speedster, so he's gonna have speed. Move heroic. Move heroic. Move attack. Move attack. Wild. Double wild. Uh, two copies of superhuman speed. Gain one move token. This turn, when moving, you may bring other heroes in your location with you. Two copies of superhuman reflexes. Uh, if the next master plan triggers an overflow, you may move one overflowing location 
rescuing and defeating each thug civilian token that can't be added. Overflow there is cancelled. Cool. That's actually pretty neat. Um, and then he's got superhuman agility. The next building turn, you may discard one move token to prevent one damage you would take. And he has another one just with different symbols on it. Uh, so that's pretty fun as well. Awesome. All right. Um, for our next young Avenger is a big Avenger. Uh, we have stature. So Cassie Lang, Ant-Man's daughter. Um, glad they went with this version and the young Avengers versus going with like a later version of Stinger. We're backing this up because she is another big mini. Um, and this, of course, on the campaign started the whole Shag argument because people didn't like the fact she was bursting out of a Shag. Um, I don't know. Interesting. I don't mind it. Doesn't bother me that much. It's going to be a pain in the ass to paint, though. Uh, but yeah, there's her cool giant sized miniature. And if we set her down, so if I put her next to like Wicking, just as a height comparison. Um,. And then also, if we put her next to Devil Dinosaur, if you saw earlier, you know how big she is compared to Devil Dinosaur. So yeah, it's pretty cool. They kept, kept her, you know, maybe not 100% accurate, but definitely cool. Um, obviously, you could have done a bunch of giant characters. You could have had Giant Ant-Man as turned into Giant Man. You could have had him when he was just a giant... Uh, just Giant Man as Hank Pym Giant Man. You could have had Yellow Jacket as a Giant Man. Um, Hawkeye was Goliath. I said, again, Thunderbolt should have been cool if we got Atlas. That would have been neat. Um, maybe next year if we get a fourth season. Uh, she has Move, Attack. Move Heroic. Move Heroic. Move Attack. Uh, wild. Double Wild. Um... And then she's got grow, move, and then double attack against a single target in her location. Shrink. You cannot take any damage from the beginning of your next turn. Pin particles gain one move or one heroic token, so a little bit of difference. Then she has two starting hand cards. Um, sorry, she has a starting hand card. Which is gigantic size. As long as this card is face up on the starting, each time you enter a location with no other heroes, you may attack there. Each time another hero enters your location, they must discard one card. So a little bit of a drawback there. And then she's got a free starting hand card. She gets an additional one that doesn't take up her original slot, but it says increased size. This card doesn't count as one of your three starting hand starting hand cards. You start the total game with four cards. She has to start with one extra wild card for being so big. Um, so that's pretty cool there. Then she also has an equipment card to go with everything else. Um, she has stature suit. Um, use on your draw card step. Instead of drawing the top card of your deck, search for a girl or shrink, draw it, shuffle it, shuffle the deck, then turn this face down. And then this just has recharge at the end of your turn. If you play a hero card with no special effect, turn this face up. So cool. She has a chance to search for grow and shrink as she needs to be. Awesome. All right. Then our last young Avenger is Kid Loki. Uh, he could join the team for a while. Love that he's sitting on Destroyer's head there. That's pretty cool. Oh, uh, yeah. So technically, I don't know if Kid Loki joined. It was actually Teen Loki, but we didn't get a Teen Loki. This is the closest we're going to get. Um, this is after, was it after Fear Itself, I think it was? Uh, Loki killed himself, reincarnated as a child, so he was Kid Loki for a while. Um, so he could kind of, like, redo his life, and then he became, um, his older self killed his younger self to become Teen Loki. He became Ag Agent of Asgard, um, and then eventually... He I think he's still kind of like a semi-good guy at this point. He's been a lot of stuff throughout the years. Um, but what's Kid Loki going to do for us? We've got attack, move, and wild. Move and wild. A wild. A wild. A wild. A double wild. A 
smarter than you, the villain or henchman your location has more health than the number of cards in your hand. Too wild there. Um, he has the all speak, turn any number of thugs in your location as civilians or vice versa. Two copies of sorcery, choose one, draw one card, or wild in your location, or reveal the top card of the master plan deck. And then his starting hand card is the master of deception. Uh, so as long as this card is face up on the start line, you may ignore the special effects on the current card you played to discard one crisis token in your location instead. Very cool. All right. Then we have two Avengers left to go. So we're going to look at uh, Dane Whitman, the Black Knight, um, who did appear briefly at the end of one of the... Was it the end of... Was it the end of WandaVision? Um, was that it? He appeared at the end and he was just kind of briefly mentioned, and he mentioned his tassel and his sword. Um, yeah, but Dane Whitman, the Black Knight's really cool. Another, uh, knight-type character. Yeah, if we want to go, like, an all swords deck. We got more sword wielders. So he's been an Avenger for a while. He's teamed up with the West Coast-type Avengers, which, which had, um... Hawkeye and Crystal, I think Hercules were on that team. There he's standing on his shield. So technically his shield is in the game. It's just not in his hand. Um, and he has the Ebony Blade, which is a uh, cursed weapon. Now this is his Black Pegasus, which we don't get, unfortunately. Um, which is kind of cool. Move. Heroic. Attack. There's his shield. Uh, move, or Heroic Attack. Heroic attack, double attack, wild, double wild, um, great tactician. Each other hero may move to a location adjacent to them containing a villain, henchman, or no empty thug civilian slots. Science and magic turn this turn for each action token you place on a threat, place one additional action token. The Avalon Shield, now the first damage you would take during the first next villain turn and then his starting hand card he gets is brave steed as long as this card is face up on the start line you may perform one free move during your turn the first time you're forced to discard a card from your hand flip this card face down instead um interesting and then he has his ebony blade weapon permanent you may perform one free attack action per turn if you don't perform at least one attack during your Action phase, you must discard one card at the end of your turn. This is basically being a cursed blade. It wants blood, it wants you to attack, and if you don't, um, then it's going to turn around and suck your life back out. So you may as well attack with it. Which might not always be the case, because this might not be anything to attack. Um, and if we turn this face down, so this card's turned face down, any effect removed from the game. So basically, it gets broken, you don't get to use it. Cool. Alright, our last hero is. Captain America, Sam Falcon. So we get the Sam Sam Wilson, the Falcon, uh, when he became Captain America. So that's cool. We also get him. So we have regular Cap. Um, we have Captain Carter. We have Captain Britain. Uh, Captain America. We have so many different shield wheelers. We have so many different flyers. It'd be cool to just make a game with guys with wings. Uh, Falcon, or this version. Angel, uh, Songbird, um, I guess technically you could probably say like maybe the Phoenix, because she probably has fiery wings. Um, I don't know. Alright, let's look at what he does. He has, of course, movement, heroic, move heroic, move attack, move heroic, move attack. A wild, a double wild, um, inspiring leadership. Uh, distribute one heroic and one attack token from the pool amongst heroes. Focus strike, double the attack symbols at the bottom of the previous hero card in the storyline. Expert shield fighter, gain one attack token or recharge your Captain America shield equipment at the end of your turn. And then he has a starting card. 
which is Falking's Wings. As long as this card is faced up on the start line, each time you perform a move during your turn, you may move perform one free move. Pretty cool. And then he gets his Captain America shield, which is his Sam Wilson on the side. Use on your turn to attack in case in location, or use on a villain turn and ignore one damage. Go to your hero in your location, then turn this face down. And then recharge at the beginning of your turn, discard one action token, or use his special card. Awesome. Alright, so that's what we have for this video um, with the second set of heroes. So the last thing we have for the multiverse box set, um, which is the villains were already done, we did the rest of the heroes, is we have the team decks, some superhero, super villain card decks, and some extra equipment cards. So come back, check out that video. Uh, it'll be video number six. Uh, while I'm stuff here. Plus, we have two other promo characters to look at, which I just left for separate. Um, so if you want to see the last of the characters, definitely come back and check out that last video. Uh, see you guys later, and hit me up in the comments. Bye!